Okay, so um, I am going to put our little handy dandy pictures down a little bit. And um, so um, the first person on the agenda is Alicia. So I'm gonna hand it over to you. All right, good morning. Thank you, Denise. Um, first of all, I wanted to share a few updates from campus ministry as um, Ms. Hoganson and Ms. Lucas are currently teaching right now, or otherwise they would be joining us this morning. So they asked me to share these updates with you. Um, the first all school mass is happening this Friday, September 11th. That will be held during our community period. Um, they'd like me to share how excited they are to join together as a community in liturgy with the Archbishop. Um, we will be using the mass that will be recorded that morning from St. Jean and then playing it um, in CPs so that our CP teachers will screen share so that CPs can come together and celebrate mass together. Um, we're going to see how that format goes, um, hoping that that goes really well and creates a sense of community and watching that together as a group. Campus ministry would also like me to share that um, they have reduced the service hour requirement from 24 hours to 12 hours for this year. They'll continue to reevaluate as they see what opportunities are avail available for students. If you have any questions about campus uh, ministry service hours, uh, it'd be great to reach out to Eliana um, Lucas or Anna Hoganson directly. They encourage students to partake in virtual service opportunities until it's safe to return to in-person service. And they've been trying to compile various opportunities available. So if your student's looking for ways to get involved, um, they'd be a great contact for that. There's a variety of opportunities posted on the campus ministry Moodle page. So if your student hasn't visited that page yet, I encourage him or her to check it out. They've also started using the new platform MobileServe. They rolled it out right at the end of last school year. So most of our returning students got logged in at the end of last year. And they've been working to get our ninth graders and new students logged into MobileServe. Um, it's a platform for logging service hours and it's, I. Um, really like this change because it's a lot more user friendly. I find it easier to, to use as well. So those are our campus ministry updates. And again, if you have any questions for Ms. Hoganson or Ms. Lucas, please don't hesitate to reach out to them. I had a few schoolhouse updates and I know Julie requested if I could touch briefly on Zoom bombing, I'd be happy to do that this morning. Not happy that that's a topic we need to talk about, but, but I'd be happy to touch on that as well in the updates. Um, first, a few, uh, a few schoolhouse updates. If your student has not yet logged into their Archbishop Murphy High School email account, you could ask your student if they've done that yet. Every student was assigned an AMHS email account um, just before the start of school. If they have any difficulty accessing those accounts, uh, John Eccles, our Director of Technology, is available to help with that. We're asking that students check those AMHS email accounts at least once daily. Um, it's part of our, uh, how we're helping to disseminate information to kids in this virtual world until we can come back together in person. Uh, something new that we're doing this year is uh, with the support of our ASB and our Director of Communications and everybody who is involved in student life, students have a new newsletter that comes out on Wednesdays called the Scratching Post, which is a great source of all information student life from clubs to things kids are involved in and doing and that comes to the students AMHS email account on Wednesdays. Um, in addition to getting information through the Murphy Minute which is a shortened version of weekly announcements um, just because we know it's a lot of all sorts of types of communication coming at everybody it helps to condense some of that information with the more detailed stuff coming out on the scratching post on Wednesdays. Um, let's see here. I just wanted to thank everyone for attending our curriculum night on September 3rd. I hope that that was a great experience for you and that you were able to get a good taste of your students' classes so far. I know we had a great turnout and our teachers were really happy with getting to meet so many other families um, this past week. There's currently a survey for students posted on Moodle. There's a parent version coming out later today. We just would love your feedback about how the opening weeks of distance learning have gone. We had a few questions that were specific to screen time and also workload, as those are two things we were trying to just gauge and get a better sense of. It's harder to do that in this virtual setting to get a feel for that, um, as well as just an opportunity for any other comments or feedback that you have. Um, so please keep an eye out for that and please encourage your students to take the student survey as well. The link is in Moodle and those Moodle announcements also go to the student email um, account as well. <clears throat> 
so far. Um, on our end, it feels like it's been a successful opening to the school year. We made a lot of changes um, to stru the structure and organization and format of distance learning. Um, I read an article this past weekend that really resonated with me. It was talking about the spring was very much crisis response. And I'm like, yeah, it definitely felt like that. We're going into this fall for schools and teachers um, had this opportunity for intentional planning. And I think we're seeing the, the fruits of that now coming, coming to be. So again, please do take some time to fill out the survey. We can always continue to grow and adjust as we go. And please don't hesitate to reach out if there's something that's not working or not working quite right. Um, sometimes that communication loop is a bit more delayed when our students are attending remotely. So we really encourage you to reach out to, uh, to any of us directly. Um, and if it's a classroom specific uh, issue, the teachers are really a great first point of contact. Um, and our teachers want to hear from you too. Um, the positive as well, I know they're hard at work too. Uh, some upcoming dates to be aware of. Um, our next late start is on September 15th. The purpose of that late start um, is it's usually when we have uh, either department meetings or staff meetings and, um, and also staff prayer share. On the 15th, we have a wellness professional development for our staff with the director of um, the Northwest Anxiety Institute, Kevin Ashworth, who I've worked with in the past, who's a great resource to our staff, especially in helping to know how to best support kids and also to do good self-care during these challenging times. Student photos are coming up on September 17th and 18th. Uh, Mr. Lotta's coordinating, coordinating those on those two days. Um, we are going to ask for students to last names A through K can come anytime during the school day on the 17th and L through Z anytime on the school day um, on the 18th. It'll be in the gym and we'll do social distancing practices and a health screening as students come in um, so that we'll make all those good health COVID-19 safety, safety procedures in place. Um, on those two days, our teachers are going to adjust the classroom activities so that they'll take attendance at the beginning of class, just so we know who is there. And they'll be directing students either to office hours and asynchronous activity or um, some type of a study or review. So if your student is not there, that's totally fine. We'll go into power school and we're going to mark um, excused student activity for anybody who came in through the day for their, their photos. And we know commute times vary and all of that, but we just wanted some record of who was in class that day. Um, let's see. The other upcoming date to be aware of, this will also go out in today's announce along with the survey link, um, the October 14th PSAT day. Uh, the College Board has given us an alternate date of January 26th, so we are going to move the PSAT testing, that's the practice SAT, to January. The October 14th day, we're going to keep that in our calendar and that will be a day for teacher office hours, review or studying as well. And on that day, we're not going to hold formal classes, but teachers will be available to help students as needed um, during that day. It also gives a little bit of brain rest and a little bit of screen time rest on that day. Um, we're moving to the January 26th date, which is what some other um, schools have already chosen to do as well, just in the hopes that we will be able to actually conduct the test. We'll prioritize testing juniors if for some reason we can't test 9th, 10th, and 11th graders, which we usually do 9th through 11th graders. Um, the reason we would prioritize testing juniors is because they, that's the one year that you can qualify for the National Merit um, Scholarship Competition is in your junior year. Um, let's see, our ASB and student leadership groups are hard at work planning for a variety of types of virtual student events and other types of plans, including how to reconfigure assemblies and homecoming. They're hard at work on that, so more to come on that. And um, we're continuing to monitor the health department briefings. Um, we see that we go to those every, every other week, so we'll get another one today. So far, we've been trending in the right direction, which is downward. We're well into the moderate range of transmission, which earlier on, we were in the high range of transmission um, in the hopes that we can get to the low range of transmission of COVID in Snohomish County so that we can um, move to a hybrid model and have some students here in person. In the meantime, um, the OSPI uh, Office of Superintendent plans, as well as the Office for Catholic Schools and Health Department guidelines do allow for high schools to have some smaller cohort groups for um, special services. So students receiving 
um, support through a support class in the Academic Resource Center or students receiving English language support. So we are going to start piloting having a very small cohort groups of students receiving ARC Academic Resource Center support classes being on campus one day a week if they choose to be here in a very small cohort group to minimize any sort of um, exposure and we'll start that the week of September 14th for families who'd like to take advantage of that. Um, and Danielle Appleby, our director of our Academic Resource Center has been helping, helping to coordinate that. Um, technology was my last topic and I'll get, to, I'll get to Zoom bombing in that part too. So students should be checking their AMHS emails again at least once a day. Please um, talk to your students, make sure they're able to access those. And if not, uh, just some outreach to John Eccles and he can help us get students set up on that. And I know that probably many of you have heard about incidents of Zoom bombing. I know that they've happened um, across the country in many schools. We had um, a couple incidents of that last spring, um, and we've had a couple of them recently. There was um, at least one incident um, last week um, where a student made a comment that was inappropriate or somebody came into a Zoom room and made a comment that was inappropriate and another incident where somebody tried to join the room named Mrs. Mitchell and the teacher thought that just didn't seem right at that time, wasn't expecting me and didn't admit them to the class. And so I just wanna emphasize that paramount to anything is the safety and well-being of our students. We want them to feel safe in class and able and ready to learn. Anytime we have an incident of um, Zoom bombing, it's something that we take very seriously and we look into and see if we can um, determine the source of that. And uh, if we can, we uh, will take steps to directly address that. We're also working with our teachers as we continue to get better at learning the technology and the specifics that surround various incidents of how we can um, enhance our own processes and security settings to help try to minimize opportunities for that and prevent it. Um, today, something we'll be sending out is um, Mr. Lada, our Dean of Students, is working towards um, giving uh, teachers guidelines on how to immediately report to Zoom as well, if there's an account that's doing something inappropriate that somehow makes its way into a room. And um, we've already been meeting this morning and met with our vice principal, Mr. Matuzak and Mr. Lada, our dean of students, to review um, the incident that happened last week that we learned about, um, as well as look at it in terms of the handbook so we can help clarify both for families and for students what the consequences would be of um, those types of behaviors in a Zoom room because just like in a classroom, being inappropriate is not acceptable. And so that's kind of what I got to report on that part at the time, uh, at this time. I don't know if there's any other questions either about that topic or any of the other topics I've shared on. Okay. There's Sorry, I'm just wondering, um, once you do come up with a set of guidelines for security, Will you be disseminating that to parents and students as well and let them know exactly what consequences they'll be facing if they do interrupt classrooms and make harassing comments? Absolutely. Harassment is absolutely unacceptable in any setting, whether it's a Zoom room, whether it's on this campus, whether it's on an athletic field, whether it's at a, you know, at a fine arts event. There's no tolerance for harassment, intimidation, or bullying of any kind. And anytime we receive a report of that nature, we take it very seriously and immediately begin investigating that. As far as na navigating this new virtual world that we're in, I think we're still learning all of the different ways that sometimes these things play out in that setting and, um, and uh, trying to be very clear about what what those consequences are and that it's no different than being in a classroom. You don't get to go in a classroom and say something inappropriate. You don't get to go in and say something mean or um, unkind. We're a Catholic school. These are not the values we espouse and everybody deserves a safe environment to learn in. And that's absolutely what we believe as a school, whether we're online, in person, in hybrid or at a student life event. And so um, we absolutely wanna to help to reinforce those appropriate behaviors with our students as well. And that's part of our plan is to send something out to families. We don't want any kid to be subjected to that. And um, when and if it happens, we're gonna respond to the best of our ability. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. And I do, and I truly, I do wanna say, you know, we really believe in our mission of this is a partnership with parents. If you sense, and this is the thing about things, situations where there's 
maybe inappropriate behaviors or harassment of some kind, if you sense something's not right, if you hear your kids talking about something that might have happened in a class, please let us know. If you sense something's not right with your own kid and they're just their behavior's not right or something shifts during the day, please let us know. Um, sometimes that's how we learn about something going on is you're the eyes and ears too and of what's going on with your kids and if you sense something's not right please let us know and partner with us so that we can try to learn more about what's going on and hopefully take as many steps as possible to prevent and hopefully eliminate the behavior altogether because it's not something that um ever makes me feel good in working in a school is having things like that happen Thank you, Alicia. Is there any other questions before we move on to Jeff? Okay, Jeff. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jeff Lada, the student here at Archbishop Murphy High School. Uh, it's good to see everyone here today. Uh, sorry for being a little tardy. I was dealing with a couple of things this morning already. Um, I, I caught most of what Alicia said, and, and like I said, when it comes to the Zoom, I mean, it is something that we do take serious and that we are following up on uh, any any issues that are reported to us. Um, and like I said, we will have more information coming out to parents specifically um, and how we're going to deal with situations like this as they occur. Um, other than that, what we've been, really been working on, uh, we have picture day. I don't know if Alicia mentioned that. Uh, I believe it was put on the calendar uh, for the... Let me bring it up right here. For the 17th and 18th of September. I uh, mentioned we that one, Jeff. 17th. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to say I did mention that one because I saw you were late joining us and I wanted to make sure we got that. So we'll, we'll have that. Uh, I know the students are wanting their ID cards that, you know, that is part of the, the, the school experience and everything. Um, this year we'll also be having uh, barcodes on our, uh, on our IDs this year so that we can use that for tracking with hot lunch program when we do return uh, to the hybrid model and eventually to getting everyone here on campus. Um, the, I know Alicia mentioned the ASB is working hard on coming up with creative ideas um, in which, because we are gonna lose some of the experiences such as homecoming and different things like that. So they are working uh, diligently on creating new ideas uh, to, for student involvement and participation in different activities. They're also working on ideas uh, to help try to bring the freshmen specifically uh, closer together. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a freshman daughter here this year. Um, and it sounds like from what I'm hearing through her, uh, they're all getting a lot of a good time in terms of when they're in classes during their breakout groups and everything. To me, it sounds like a lot of the freshmen are really meeting with uh, different groups and different things like that and getting to know some of their classmates, which is uh, a, a positive piece. But we are going to be looking at, sorry, my phone keeps ringing. We are going to look at how we can uh, further welcome the freshmen into, uh, you know, community uh, with different ideas, uh, virtual type of ideas until we can actually. So other than that, it, it's, it's kind of business as usual for the most part. Um, just working closely with the teachers. I know mm -hmm. everything I'm hearing so far, I, I've been able to get on a few of the Zooms and teachers are doing a fantastic job of creating, you know, great content and keeping the students uh, active during the class time. So if anybody has any specific questions, I'll answer that, but that's pretty much it. Thank you, Jane, or thank you, Jeff. Um, James, I believe you're not muted right now, so I'm just going to, sorry to call you so, out, but uh, sorry, I just to let you know. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Jeff? Okay. I don't think I saw Jana join, unless maybe I missed it. No, Jana, it looks like Jana, Jana is not feeling well today. Oh, no. Okay. Well, great. Well, was there any uh, further admission updates from anybody from the schoolhouse that had anything for admissions? Okay, Denise. Good morning. 
Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, quite a few things to cover with you today out of the development office. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to uh, mention the fact that uh, a special announcement was just sent out about our script program. So the deadline for script is next Monday, September 14th. So you basically want to get your orders in by 8 a.m. and then all the orders will be collected and then available at the front office on Thursday. Okay, so if you have any questions about script, you can feel free to email me directly. I can walk you through it. Most people know what it is. Uh, we do get, um, you know, uh, a good kickback from the script program with our gift cards. So help support the school and order your gift cards through script. Um, a couple of different things. Uh, this year, I, most of you are aware we have a fall raffle. Um, and this year we'll be having the fall raffle to support the auction. Uh, so the fall raffle, um, we're going to be selling books of tickets in, in of 10. So parents have the opportunity to earn service hours. So you can pick up your book of 10 raffle tickets. They're $20 each and you can sell them and you'll get 10 parent service hours, okay? So we're doing this to help support the auction. We usually have the fall raffle uh, during this time and it will help to um, um, increase our fall fundraising for the auction. So there's more information that's gonna be coming out about that. Um, during that, well, it'll go, it'll start the beginning of October and then it'll, it will end on October 23rd. And with that, we'll be pro pulling prizes for the winners of the auction. Um, so on Thursday, November 12th, we'll, we'll pull um, a $12,000 Fred Meyer gift card. And on Friday, we'll pull a $1,000 Amazon gift card. And then also there will be an opportunity for a $2,500 um, tuition discount. So it's a great fundraiser to be a part of. Um, you'll want to watch out for information coming your way. You can earn service hours and then you could also get a big price. Um, another um, big thing that we're working on, we're already planning is our dream auction, which is going to be um, November 12th through November 17th. And the dream auction is our biggest fundraiser for the school, helps support our program, our student programs uh, and all that we do at school. Um, so that begin, it's going to be a, a virtual auction. So we'll start on November 12th, which is a Thursday. We'll open up the bidding and then we'll go ahead and we'll have a live portion of our auction on Saturday, November 14th. So on the live portion, it'll begin at 6 p.m. and you'll be able to go ahead and click a link and go right into the YouTube. So it'll be, it'll be a real community event where everybody can join in. We have date night dinners, we have a gala in the box. We have lots of fun things to go along with this. So more information is coming about that. And you'll be able to bid on live items during the live stream auction. And then the auction will wrap up on Tuesday, November 17th. So we're in the planning stages. We're looking for great auction items. Uh, today, later this afternoon, uh, we'll have um, a special an, uh, an announce going out about how to um, procure your items. So you can, we're looking for items, um, experiences, things that you need at home, just all, a variety of things. And you'll be able to get some ideas on the Sign Up Genius. We'll, we'll go ahead and send out that link later today and also through an Amazon wish list. So I've put together um, a great wish list of items um, that we're looking for. We'll send out that link. You basically click on the Amazon, you click on the link. It'll take you right to Dream Auction. It'll go right into your account and you can view all of the different items that we're looking to procure. And with that procurement, when you go ahead and donate an auction item through Amazon, it could be sent directly to the school and you'll receive parent um, volunteer hours for that also. So we're, we're um, working on that. If you wanna be a part of the, of the team, we have a procurement team. If you don't know what you might like to uh, procure as an item, just email me directly, I'm happy to help. Um, but we're real excited about the virtual auction this year. It should be fun and we're gonna get people together um, on the live stream night. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, and then also, if you have um, any questions about volunteer hours and how to obtain your 20 volunteer hours uh, for the school year, just please let me know. I've got lots of great things that you can do. Um, 
So just email me directly. Any questions? Great. Thank you, Denise. Denise, I actually had one quick one I was trying to unmute. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but is it true that if parents donate towards the auction, that also counts towards their the money that we're... You... Oop, <laughs> she's muted now. Hey, Denise, you're, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. <laughs> so yes, answer to your question. You you can donate through Sign Up Genius. You can donate through the um, Amazon wish list, and you can obtain your parent hours that way. So it's it's basically the value of the item. So if I go ahead and donate an item on Amazon wish list, and it's a hundred dollars, that means you get your five parent obligation hours towards your twenty. So. Um, and that's kept, that's kept up through the development office. You don't have to donate through the Sign Up Genius or Amazon. You can go out and get something else and you can fill out a procurement form and bring it in. But anything that you donate to the auction goes towards your parent volunteer hours. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Great. Anything else? Any other questions for... Denise, Jay? I have a quick question. I have a quick question. Um, so the kids have 12 hours that they're doing. They reduce that with the pandemic. So the parents have 20 hours? The parents are responsible for 20 yeah. hours for the school year. Right? Okay. And then with admissions, um, that with Jana not here, what's the, I wonder what's the uh, count for each class? Or in the freshman class and such? We're currently at 465 overall. Uh -huh. I, would, I would have to double check to tell you that the breakdown by grade. I'm sorry, I just don't have that memorized right now. Okay. Uh, had some uh, new applications trickle in over the summer, so we're a little bit lower than last year, but not too far off. So about 465. And then um, one of the classes, would it be Mr. Lada that I get a hold of if I have? Um, questions about actual class size and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Right. I'll reach out to him. Okay. Or Mr. Lott or Mr. Matuzak, depending on what the question is. Okay. It looks like I just pulled up our ninth grade classes at 94 students. Sophomore classes. Sophomore is 133. Nice. That's a lot. Okay, thanks. Any more questions for Denise J? Oops, sorry, Kathleen. Did you have more? Okay. Um, any other questions for Denise J? Okay, Mark for athletics. All right. Um, so um, as everybody knows, we don't have any fall sports uh, going on this year uh, due to the pandemic. Um, our next sports season will start uh, December 28th, uh, which is what the WIAA is calling season two. Um, it's your traditional winter sports season. Um, so boys, girls basketball, um, boys swim and dive, and then also wrestling um, will start then. Um, so December 28th is their date that they have for now, and that'll run until about the end of February. Um, and then season three will begin. Um, season three is your typical fall sports season. Um, so basically they took fall sports and kind of moved it in between winter and spring. Uh, season four, um, which is basically spring season, is getting moved to after season three, and that won't begin until about end of April, first week of May, and it can run all the way to the end of June. Um, so if you do have a student that plays a spring sport, um, you know, as you make summer plans for next year, just kind of be aware that it's very likely possibility that they could still be in their sport all the way up until about June 27th. Um, so that's kind of how the WI is trying to do it to get the most games and most opportunities for all the students. Um, around here at the school, we've uh, changed our uh, athletic sign up to a platform called Final Forms. Uh, hopefully, you have received those links uh, in some of the school announce uh, school announces that have gone out uh, with the Final Forms and the uh, the students using their AMHS emails. 
it's a great way for all of our coaches and administration to see who has signed up for sports, who's eligible for sports academically, financially, um, has all their paperwork in. Uh, it's also really good for our parents as um, you can set up reminders, like a 90-day, a 60-day, a 45- and a 30-day uh, reminder for physical expirations. So that way um, you guys can just get an email and know right away, hey, we need to schedule this doctor appointment or we have this coming up. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for final forms, or if you have any question on that, um, please sign your student up. You do have to click each individual sport that you are um, okay with your student uh, participating in. You don't have to do all at once. So if you just maybe have a volleyball player and you're not sure if she's going to play softball, you know, just sign up for volleyball now. And then all you have to do later on is go in and click the button that says softball and then she has parent permission for softball. It's also really great because it tracks anytime anybody changes anything for a student and it tells us exactly who it does. Um, so we know if it's the parent that did it or, if, you know, sometimes we get students that try to sneak on the sports teams without their parents knowing. And um, we would also know if the student went in there and changed it based on the email that logged into the account. So if you have any questions on that, please feel free to email me or Mrs. Snell. Uh, Mrs. Snell is uh, Cassie, uh, she just was married over the summer, so her last name went from Snyder to Snell, if anybody was uh, wondering about that. Um, also uh, on campus, uh, to keep up with uh, our Wesco guidelines as far as improvements to our lower stadium, uh, we have started to add visitors bleachers uh, to the far side, um, as well as putting a fence around the field uh, to help out with, you know, soccer balls or cross balls that, you know, sometimes uh, run astray during games or practices, as well as hoping to keep uh, spectators off the field as well. Um, so those are some of the improvements uh, we have going on in athletics. Um, it's kind of our schedule that's coming up as well. And if there's any questions, I'd love to answer them. Any questions for Mark? Okay, if we don't have any other questions, we're going to move on from the school reports to the parent association report. There's no further questions for the school report. Just giving everybody a little bit of time to take themselves off and mute if they did have something. So, okay, so just um, jumping right in. Um, so, for folks that are new, this is a uh, the time that um, we give an update for the activities that are going on um, across the school um, relative to parent association. Of course, right now, um, things are much quieter because everybody is currently working remote. Um, so let me hop over to um, the calendar. So this is the usual calendar that I hand out um, at every Parent Association meeting, um, and uh, generally or historically, uh, we have um, had a Parent Link Day and a Curriculum Night. Um, by this point, of course, because everything is virtual, we are not doing that, um, or we did not uh, provide cookies and water um, like we usually do. Um, usually, the first part of the school year is uh, fairly quiet. Um, we do have um, the Parent Association meetings every Tuesday. The, um, it's on, located on this calendar. However, it's also located on the school calendar. So if you have um, any questions on when a, the next Parent Association meeting is, um, feel free to check the school calendar. Um, I have kept as placeholders some of the activities that we usually do around this time. Just um, in case things change. Um, usually the first uh, event of the year that we do is, in October is for the faculty and staff. Um, that's still um, TBD at this point. Um, and then we get into November with admissions open houses. Again, TBD at this point, um, we're gonna wait to, to um, see how those unfold and how we can help support them um, as we move forward. Hey, Denise. Mm -hmm. uh, just just want to mention that the parent association meetings are um, 
you do receive your parent obligation hours for this time. So yes. I have written down everyone's name. You'll receive your hours for this meeting. So um, that's always a nice thing. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for that reminder. So, um, so encourage anybody and everybody to come to the parent association meetings because again, uh, you do get service hours for that. And um, after this meeting, I actually go in and I record it within Sign Up Genius so that everybody um, it flows right into the school's tracking. Um, and then just uh, I'll just go through December just so that um, uh, excuse me. Actually, mm -hmm. Uh, before you go on next, because you sent me the email about access code for Sign Up Genius prior to this meeting, so I got a little uh, mis uh, quite not understand your email saying I don't need the code to you know to record in Sign Up Genius meeting for prior today. So you gonna send out the access code for everybody to they can go. Uh, I can log in to um, Sign Up Genius. Yeah, so for that one, that one's a closed one because we we don't, we are the ones who put it in based on the attendees of this um, event. Um, but everything else within all the other sign up geniuses are open, and you can just go in and sign yourself up, and and then you'll get your uh, your service hours that way. Okay. So I don't have to go to sign up no, genius. Say I'm we'll gonna attendee just yeah, to go to we'll, the join the Zoom. Then as it is, you're gonna record. Yep, we're gonna record it for you. You don't need to do anything. All right, thank okay. you. Okay, uh-huh. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, we're praying that uh, at some point we all can go back, the students can get back together again and um, start doing some of the fun events that Parent Association has done in the past, including candy cane cocos, ice cream events, and things like that. But at this point, um, we're, the Parent Association uh, is on hold on those type of events until we all get back together. Again. Okay, so um, just hopping back over to our agenda. Um, so just a little bit about Sign Up Genius um, for folks that um, may uh, this may be new to them. So Sign Up Genius is a the location where we put all of our volunteer um, signups and um, service hours for parents. Um, it's our way to give visibility to all those opportunities across the schoolhouse. Um, for folks that are new to Murphy this year, um, it is uh, much slimmer than it has been in the past. I, I did want to give you some um, perspective of how we have used it historically. So there's about 14 um, different areas uh, that you that have um, service opportunities usually. Um, and I've included the list in here. It's everything from the school wish list that Denise had mentioned, um, admissions, library, speech tournaments, mock trial, DECA, fine arts, all of those organizations come together and, and the school um, and I manage um, the Sign Up Genius so that um, parents have visibility into all these different opportunities. Of course, this year is unique. And so at this point, uh, you'll just see a few, but um, to give you some idea of the volume that we've had in the past. So generally at the beginning of the year, we start off with about 14, 15 pages worth of sign up opportunities and the number of opportunities um, range um, uh, completely. Um, so uh, at the beginning of last year, we had um, about, uh, let's see, uh, we had about 1,400 people that actually came in and um, looked at the site and um, signed up. And um, we had many, many opportunities. Again, right at this point, there's not um, as many. So um, as Denise mentioned earlier, please feel free to reach out to Denise Janovich and she can provide you um, more opportunities. Is there any questions before I move on? Or Denise, did you want to add anything more about the the service opportunities? Yes, and it's, it's especially this fall, the, the actual raffle, it's going to be super easy for you to get 10 hours. You just pick up a booklet of 10 raffle tickets, sell them for $20 a piece to your family, friends, neighbors, 
you return the book back, you get an instant 10 hours. So we're putting that opportunity forward to you this fall since we don't have a lot of other volunteer opportunities. So it's a great way to knock off 10 of those 20 hours right off the bat. So be sure to look out for that information. Be sure to donate an auction item. Get your, get your volunteer hours done and out of the way this fall. You'll feel so much better next spring not having to run around and try to figure out what to do. Okay? And please email me if you have any questions. Uh, Denise Montanet, uh, are you going to send us the calendar document to PDF with the email via? Can we get that? The calendar for yearly calendar so we know we can plan the meeting? Yes, to absolutely. Attend? I'm, All right, um, thank you. Yes, I, we took down attendees, so um, I'm happy to, to send it out to everybody um, as well. And then the other thing is if you can't find the piece of paper after this meeting, um, feel free to go out to the school calendar because they're all on the school calendar as well. Denise, question. The uh -huh. events that are normally scheduled for first term, yep. um, if we're not back in, is the thought that we'll just push them and have additional events second term or will we just cancel them all together? Um, at this point, I'm, I would love to say that we could push them all into second term, but we're gonna have to work out with all the other events. Um, because usually it's part of the full school calendar, and so we don't want to, you know, step over any other of the of the events that are already planned for school. So we'll we'll kind of uh, I would love to say that we could do them in the second half, but we'll have to to see how that goes. Okay. Is there a parents club um, link on the website and? the sign up genius and the wish list on the website as well. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. Um, and then uh, just to, to um, wrap up, so um, just showing you some of the expenses that we have um, within the parent association. The parent association is the one who funds um, the Sign Up Genius subscription on an annual basis for the school. So uh, we will continue to do that. And then generally we look for um, donations to fund um, some of our other upcoming activities, including new family dinner, the awards reception, um, baccalaureate mass, and, and some of the other activities that we have for the, the students. So um, at this point, um, again, the first, uh, first real expense that, that we get hit with is in September, um, and then, uh, then it, we're looking to January after that. Any other questions? It's a unique year, and so we're, we're uh, you know, adjusting as, as, uh, as things change and evolve, and so we'll, we'll continue to, to keep everybody updated. Um, now that uh, you've attended a parent association meeting, I will be putting you on a list, and so then um, I can communicate with you through Sign Up Genius and such and give you um, other updates as well. Okay, anything else? I'm gonna close this out and put everybody up there. Okay, so for our final item, um, we have the closing prayer. If anybody doesn't, if there's no other questions. Okay. As we close this meeting, Lord, we want to give honor to you. Thank you, God, for the time we have today to discuss issues and make decisions. May you bless each person who took the time to gather here today and let your hand of protection be on them throughout the rest of the week. Let the work done here today come to fruition and let it all be in your glory. Help us each to do our part to bring the plans discussed to life. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining um, the first uh, meeting of the year. Um, truly appreciate you taking time out of your day to, 
to join us. It's great to see so many of you and see the faces. Um, wish we could all be together, but in the meantime, um, I hope everybody stays safe and healthy and um, have a great rest of the week. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again. I like to, I like to say thank you for Denise Montoya. It's gonna be a challenge for anybody one way or another, but I really believe we are in this together. I'm really proud of you guys trying. Thank you and stay safe. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Thanks, Denise. Bye-bye. Thank you.